Okay, this is part three of the install, and as I mentioned before, I was too impatient. If I had just waited a few more minutes, as soon as I stopped that video, this came up on the screen. So this is exactly where I left off last time, and uh, what we have down here in my status window is uh, all of the normal stuff that should show, hopefully show up, and it says that the uh, Android launched, ABD is running normally, performing a sample project, uh, so the emulator was found, and it's uh, back in 5554, same emulator I had up there, waiting for home. That's actually what took so long for some reason. Uh, home is on the device. 554 and then it uploaded the first project that I created and it installed the first project but the first project doesn't really do anything um, and so this main screen here says make yourself at home you can put your favorite apps here uh, that's kind of a new addition looks like it's got the current time actually and it is the it is the same time as 229 229 so it looks like it's keeping the right time see all your apps uh, touch the circle Hmm, I'm just going to press OK here. Oh, looks like a... It looks very graphic and tense, actually. Um, so maybe... Uh, in fact, I'm surprised to see the camera here, too, which is kind of interesting. So if I say Menu, I click on Menu, I should get a menu. It comes up on the bottom here, Wallpaper, Manage Apps. I click on Manage Apps here. Um, so this, this video, essentially, I'm going to show you this emulator. Uh, I should see this program on here that I... That I started. Oh, look at loading. Nice little status here. Uh, Android keyboard, system demo, calculator. Wow. The, uh, the click the wheel on my mouse is actually allowing me to go through the. These look like the built in apps. It's not, I was looking for my app, actually. So if I can press, let me press home, actually, on here. And again, you can see how unresponsive, I guess, you know. I shouldn't call it unresponsive. I don't know. I guess I guess I'm spoiled. But uh, as an emulator goes, I I just I have always had the opinion that uh, it uh, runs slowly. Choose some apps to add your app to the home screen. Touch and hold. Well, I'm not going to touch and hold. Uh, where is my app? It was called First Project. Oops, I just saw it. Oh, speech recorder. That's not what I wanted. Uh, let's go back. Let's return back. Here it is right here. First project. If I click on it, it's not going to do anything, actually. Because it's nothing. Oh, hello world. Okay, so it, did, it put hello world in there. So first project activity. That was for first project. And you can see that this is the first project here that I created. And in here, uh, there's nothing. It, it, apparently, they set it up as a whole uh, hello world. So what we've got going on here, then... Uh, is uh, probably in the XML interface file. They've got Hello World on the screen. So. Uh, but I'll save that. Uh, I'll save the explanation for that uh, for the Hello World first, your first job, your first Java Android app, which is going to be the next video. Uh, but you can see it kind of works if I, you know, press the back button. What ended up happening is I got my first project installed on the emulator, which means I can test it. And this this should look identically to how it would look on a real phone. Uh, the only thing different is that uh, it's only installed on your computer, and the emulator itself doesn't run that, that that fast. But again, I am you know to give this due credit, I am running it from a Parallels desktop, so it's running in an emulator. It's an emulator in an emulator, so essentially it's going to run slow. Uh, but you can see that the buttons actually kind of work. You can, you know, press the, the call button to make a call. Actually, you can press the, the disconnect button, uh, speaker button, the off button. Uh, press the speaker button so it made the made the uh, call log is empty. Yeah, I know call log is empty. Uh, you can, you know, use the keypad to type numbers uh, use the left and right to navigate through the menu as you can see the, I'm clicking this arrow over here and it's navigating down so uh, not a bad idea after you install the API to kind of run and I'm going I'm to close it turn it off close the emulator so after you get everything installed 
um, you end up uh, testing the functionality essentially is what, what I've been doing for you and then uh, after you configure Eclipse that was that last step clicking on Windows uh, clicking on preferences including the Android folder number four is take a break and congratulate yourself because you've completed the entire install so it took three videos to do it uh, because I gave up on the gave up on the emulator uh, but go ahead, uh, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and create uh, this first project just to make sure you can create the project, you can save the project, you can find it in the workspace directory and then uh, you know see if you can run that emulator and actually just kind of as a test I'm going to run that emulator one more time only because I think it's going to load faster this time, I have faith actually because the first time you load the emulator it actually has to build a lot of the support temp files and stuff and uh, every time you load uh, the emulator, it will keep. So you can, uh, you, it'll keep the previous projects. See, it did run a little bit faster. It'll keep the previous projects uh, that you have um, already installed in the emulator. So it, it does kind of mimic. Um, not only does it keep its own configuration settings. So if you make a change here, you can actually change the configuration of the emulator. Um, see, it is loading a little faster. Um, nice test and. Um, It'll, it'll keep configuration information, it'll keep previously run applications that you've already run, it uh, keeps logs, uh, it'll hold text messages that you've sent back and forth between the emulators. Um, it's, it's pretty sophisticated, so perhaps I shouldn't complain about how long it takes. So. And the last time it actually loaded up, because um, as soon as I stopped that video it loaded actually, so we're seeing, I'm hoping it's just going to start loading at this point. I'll give it a few more minutes. If not, I'll stop the video. But uh, I'll be patient. This is an exercise for me in patience. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to start in and talk about uh, how to program in Java with the Android application development environment. Now, it's not going to be a full programming course in Java. Rather, what I'm going to do is give you the Android-specific information, but it uses core Java. So the concept of creating an object, creating a class, inheriting a class from a class, using objects with the, you know, has a relationship with other objects, or one object is an instance of another object, apply to this particular scenario. Um, the Java apps actually um, are created in a... Uh, let's see, I guess it's not really an application. It doesn't inherit from app, or app, it doesn't inherit it. Well, it inher everything inherits from Java, from the object, but we don't have the extend from applet or extend from application kind of concept. Instead, it's all run in a specific platform designed for the uh, emulator or for you know for the Google environment, Android environment, uh, which is uh, XML. It's an XML based. So I'm gonna put this over here continue talking while this is loading hopefully and I kind of take a look at the project itself in terms of the components we have this thing called an Android manifest XML um, because I'm going to hopefully go back to that emulator and see this program running uh, but let's just let's I'll, in the meantime I'll give you a kind of a layout of this project so in the package explorer I've got my first project the first project has an SRS which is a source code directory and this is how it is stored. As uh, I'm not going to go back to the Windows Explorer, but this is how it is stored um, on the Windows partition in, in the uh, Explorer. And each one of my Java files, this one in particular, is the default main program. It's in a package, and it's just the regular old Java package. In fact, this looks like any other Java application that you might be familiar with if you've used Eclipse before. When I click on the file, it shows up in the right-hand window. This one is a .java file. It loads out the same way. You've got the package information at the top. You've got your imports. And your imports are going to be by default. You know, it's importing in activity. We're going to use activity and then the OS bundle for the 4.0 that uh, we're going to install this for. And we can run this, although we've said create a 4.0 project, we can run it in the 3.0 or the 2.0 or any of the emulators. Oops, look at that. I see no service on the bottom. Go back to my emulator. Here it is. Look at that. Lo and behold, my patience has paid off. Although this is Saturday, December third, and it is two thirty-seven. Well, it's a minute off. Charging fifty percent. That's interesting. No service. Well, that's obvious. And the phone is locked. That's interesting. 
I wonder if any of the controls are working yet. Yeah. This is an interesting emulator. It's locked. Uh, interesting. Well, let's see what's going on over here. Maybe it's installing the app. Uh, installing first project. Oh, it's still installing the app. Uh, it's installing the app. But I haven't gotten there yet, so it's still it's still installing the app. I am definitely going to need to find a faster running computer for this. Um, it proves right here loading in a parallel window. It's just not functional enough. It runs too slowly. It does run, however. So if you've got an old computer you're doing this on, have faith. Just wait. So this is, I guess, not a bad re example of, you know, what you need to do essentially. But none of the buttons are working yet because it is still, it is still installing. So I'm just let that go for a little bit longer. Let me come back to this. So what we're looking at is a combination of Java source code, and this is going to be a, a first class that's created. That's just going to be extending activity, and the activity is essentially doing nothing more than putting stuff on the screen. And uh, I'll talk about all of the different uh, uh, different classes in the hierarchy. Uh, but activity is one of the basic um, basic built-in functionality, and I'll go through that as we go through the course. Uh, but what I wanted to show you was this manifest out here, and it's an XML interface. So the manifest style, uh, manifest file, if it loads, I double clicked on it, and I'm expecting it to load. However, my computer seems oh, there it is. There we go. We got an XML interface where we have defined certain things, and think of this more along the lines of a configuration file. So we got the package name, we got the version numbers, and we can we can add information to this, we can configure it. And I'll talk about the Android manifest in an upcoming, uh, definitely in, in one of our upcoming uh, Hello World lectures. But this is where we're getting a lot of the services configuration, a lot of the modules that we're using in here. Uh, so that's going to be one that you're going to look at. You're also going to look at the layouts, and the layouts are done in XML. And here are the main layout XML file. It's going to show up on the right hand side eventually. That eventually it doesn't normally take this long to load, by the way. It's because the computer is uh, underpowered for what it needs to do. That might look familiar if you saw the last video. It is essentially a presentation that shows you uh, what it looks like. So you might get the impression, and hopefully you will, that the layout is our screen interface. So our user interface design is done in XML and has a nice little drag and drop feature where we can add components, text fields, uh, different widgets, form widgets, buttons, and things of that nature, you know, check boxes and stuff. And you know, what I just did a few minutes ago is I kind of dragged and dropped stuff uh, onto the onto the canvas. It's very Visual Basic like and it's not too hard to program in. Uh, what you end up getting is essentially an interface where you build the XML file and then the XML file sort of works with the Java file and you in programmatically through the Java source code you can manipulate these objects and it's very event driven. Um, so in the next video I'm going to show you how to build a Kind of sort of like what we just built here, but from scratch instead of using one of the projects. Uh, and uh, show you how to modify the XML interface and show you how to build essentially a, a Hello World beginning type program. And uh, meanwhile, let's just take a quick look before I end the video just to see how far we've gotten. And uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, oh, failed, failed to install it on the device. Uh, you know what? I probably failed to install it because I was using it and modifying it. So we did, uh, we have failed. You know, actually not. Never even got to that point. So it looks like my emulator failed. So this is a classic example of what's going to happen if you don't have enough memory running on your computer. <laughs> so <laughs> your choices are: don't run in a virtual machine, run on a faster computer. Uh, so next time I, I think what I'll do for this particular demo is run it from my Mac partition instead of running it from a Parallels desktop Windows inside. But uh, the purpose of the this demonstration was to show you the install 
and uh, make sure your tools were working. So we have that done in a Windows environment. The next, uh, I will also have a video coming up that's going to show you, because I need to install it next on my Mac partition. So it will show you how to install it on the Mac partition. And then I will use the Mac partition to demonstrate uh, the emulator. So if you're interested in seeing the base emulator, take a look at the last parts of the Mac install and you'll see a demo that's a little bit more effective uh, than this one. But uh, Anyway, I hope you uh, have installed or I hope you will get your uh, Eclipse and your Android and your Java installed correctly be able to at least get the emulator to show uh, if it does or does, may or may not run correctly for you. I've see, kind of seen in my live demo it uh, doesn't always behave. Uh, depends on your memory, depends on how fast your processor is, uh, but give it time. Let it sit. Uh, you know, go get some coffee, come back, and uh, hopefully it will actually run for you. Um, and so it should. It should so. Anyway, so uh, stay tuned. Uh, at this point, you're ready for Hello World. And uh, if you want to see the emulator a little bit better, play with it on your own, yours should work. So hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time for the Hello World of the Android.